Hello, I'm Dennis Danzik, and we're back in the power room uh, for part B, and this has to do with model 46. And you can hear the tone generator firing up. We're starting to spin this uh, particular engine up. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of briefing on the parts and the pieces here, as always. Uh, about a 1,500 pound flywheel, power ring, transmission, all magnetic. Um, by the way, I can stop this. There's absolutely no load um, on, that, uh, on that engine. Uh, we've got a uh, turbine alternator here. Uh, this one happens to be from New Zealand. We don't use those anymore. We build our own. Um, this meter uh, will read, you're gonna see it reading a little bit because we've got some, some EMF going on here. But if I rotate that, you'll see, the, uh, you'll see the voltage climb. This is meant to run at a steady 60 to 66 volts. Um, as always, go, we go back through a, a standard solar charge controller inverter into battery storage back here because Model 30 runs quad four of our laboratory, which you'll be able to see uh, when you come on a tour. It's now speeding up. The point of entropy on this particular uh, model is this piece of blue tape right here. So you can kind of track that. What's gonna happen here is this magnetic loop. This is a uh, permanent magnetic loop, as you can see, is gonna induce a charge uh, into those aluminum rings. And we're gonna have a nice fluid transition um, to our alternator. And again, magnetic propulsion units see no load, okay? We don't plug a hair dryer into this. We simply transfer potential into the system, and that system starts with a capacitance that's regulated by proprietary uh, network uh, as well as uh, software, which was all written here in-house. This is designed to be walked around. Um, you come on a tour, you can walk all the way around it, look at all of the uh, uh, cords and everything, where they're going. Uh, they're all in a acrylic, clear, excuse me, acrylic. And again, we don't stop these videos, we just continue, even if I make a little bit of a flub here. Um, we have a consumer panel on this one, which you can see close up and personal when you, uh, when you take a tour. And we're gonna wait until this thing uh, fires up. Again, it's all about getting a lot of friction out of the system. Uh, friction equals chaos, that's entropy in the system. We wanna remove that. So we're gonna wait just a minute. There we go, it's kicking off uh, by itself as you can see. And again, um, I'll use a piece of paper here. This is 100% no contact. We're already developing about 20 volts and you'll see that little dip when we hit entropy. It'll go a little bit higher and then come down, go a little bit higher, come down, go a little bit higher. And you see we're coming up on 22, 23 volts now. And again, zero contact. There's no contact between the drive and the plate. We're just looking to put out that potential voltage. We want that voltage to get out into uh, capacitance so that we can use it uh, down line. Again, there's an amount of control voltage going to this from the photonic system or the coil system, uh, which you'll see, uh, you've seen in other episodes, as well as the all important, learn about that point of entropy. And I believe that starts in episode titled Marie 4. Really important to, uh, um, to learn that. We'll let it go up a little bit higher here. We're at 31 volts and climbing. Uh, this model's much different than uh, the other ones. We uh, get the paired permanent magnetic field to fire through vibration, uh, through tonal generation. You can hear that. It's much, much more efficient to where our early engines fired, oh, uh, maybe once a second. Uh, these can get into th literally thousands of times per second if we want them to. Uh, it's really not necessary. We're just looking to supply the amount of voltage that we need to charge the system. And you're gonna learn in a later episode, that's about um, 2000 amps is about uh, maximum, about 80 to 130 uh, amps constant out of the other side of the system uh, so that we get the amplification. Uh, we're now up to about 40 volts. And again, no contact. I can put that piece of paper completely through there. I'll put a little bit of stress on this so you can see the voltage go down. I'll put a little bit of stress on it. I'm just pushing on it. There we're into the 30s. It'll recover very quickly. And again, we've got this one rotating very slow um, just for safety reasons. Uh, we do a lot of tours here and we don't want anybody to get uh, hurt. We got a really great uh, safety record here. 
And again, this is magnetic. This aluminum is not. Remember, normally too, you don't see an engine exploded like this or, or assembled like this. All of this material is tucked down inside. The engine's actually only about 50 inches tall. We uh, build it in this way so that when people come on a tour, they can actually see its operation and uh, understand a little bit more about how the engine functions. It's easier to see it. Whoa, excuse me. It is easier to see it um, uh, in an exploded uh, uh, way as this so that you can see the transmission from low to high speed. This is actually about a uh, 20 to 1 gain. And of course, part of our patent is not only does our rotor move on one side, our stator moves in the opposing direction and therefore doubling the speed. This goes back through a mercury commutator into a rectifier and that's where we get our voltage. And we're coming up on 60 volts DC right now. We appreciate you tuning in. And of course, if you come on a tour, all of this is open. You can walk around, you can take a look, you can even start and stop this engine um, for yourself. A um, lot of fun. Uh, it's really an enjoyable tour. Try to get out to, here to Scottsdale and uh, by the end of the year, uh, actually probably September, October of this year, um, our Willwood Laboratory will be open in Wyoming and you'll also be able to take a tour there. Thank you very much. We appreciate you tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode.